Hey guys, and welcome to another Clash of Clans video. Today, we're going to be looking at my Legend League base for the first couple of days of the season, and we're going to be looking at my first day in Legend League from the attacks perspective as well. So, here's the base right now. It's on your screen here. It is sort of a mix between a teaser style and a ring base. So, the troops are supposed to go to the town hall, but sometimes they'll go around the side and they don't have like a reason to go to the town hall here. So they might just go all the way around the base and never actually end up in the town hall compartment because of the outside walls. And the only actual compartment in this base is the Eagle compartment and the town hall compartment. So if you're not able to break open those walls, then there's absolutely no reason for the heroes or for the troops to go into the town hall ever. So that's sort of the reasoning behind the layout design. Later on, we'll watch uh, uh, five of my attacks, not all triples, so be aware of that. Uh, and eventually, we're going to also see the rankings for the end of the day as well, so stick around for that. Speeding up the time here, eventually we're going to find our first match, and it's not going to be in 23 hours, so right there. 22.58, so around an hour and two minutes past the season ending is around when all, everyone's matched up and we can actually find opponents. So here's the first base. It's a super, super old layout. I'm like, I don't even, I'm not even sure how old. Probably at the start of the Town Hall 12 when we just got our three Infernos. But sometimes it's still, sometimes it can still hold up, so... That's why people still use it. So Queen Charge Lalo is my attack strategy here. Starting off, we're gonna have the Queen Charge Lalo and inside the CC is gonna be uh, eight loons or nine loons. So just straight up Queen Charge Lalo, nothing else going on. Kings to try and take out the queen and have two layers of wall breakers to get the queen into the Inferno compartment. And although the queens Probably not going to make it to the Infernos initially. When she rounds the corner by the Royal Champion, she's going to be able to take out the, the Infernos from there. Preparing freezes and rages for the Queen. Help her get through these outside defenses. Lots of ground bows and stuff. Really pounding the Queen. But eventually she's going to round this corner, and that's when, we, that's when we can start the Lalo. Taking for the Queen a little bit with a couple of loons. It also helps get the cleanup started a little bit faster. The so Queen's not going to have much health after these Eagle shots, so that's why I froze the uh, Expos and stuff. So Queen gets rid of two Infernos, and the Sweeper that's pointing up, so that's very powerful as well. CC's coming out, and the Queen doesn't have ability or anything, so she's just going to die here. No chance to even put a Poison spell down. Loons make it past the... Loons make it to the CC area, which uh, forces the Stone Slammer to go to the Town Hall, which is where it was supposed to go straight to the town hall and then that secures the two star but this royal champion because of the cc uh didn't get pulled out fast enough or it got pulled out at all is the problem uh the royal champion isn't going to get very much done so yeah that's basically the end of the attack it's kind of close actually considering um the royal champion if we had put her in a better spot or maybe Probably around 9 o'clock-ish, taking care of the point defenses over there. Then, although the CC would have been pulled eventually, it would have been pulled a little bit uh, slower. Because the CC was in the middle, dealing with the friendly queen. Let's start at the right. So here we have the Itsu base here. This base here, I... I just... I really rarely 3 started with my normal armies. 
because my normal armies included like mass e drags and stuff. But all these, uh, all these defenses with two, with two tile spacing between them just makes that impossible. Just impossible to do. So now we're starting the Lalo at twelve o'clock, and the queen is still in her own compartment and still alive, so that's a good thing as well. So the queen's gonna be able to help with a couple of defenses um, in the middle of the base, while the Lalo's working its way around the outside. Warden's still a little bit slow here, so we're gonna have to use the Warden ability soon. A spell in the middle might help them get to the middle and get to the sweepers, which is a pretty good thing. Yeti Blimp at the bottom of the screen, which I'm not sure if I mentioned already, is the problem, or is the change that it made to the army. So then it would be more versatile, and it actually makes it possible to use in Legend League. And not only possible, but really powerful as well. So, with Legend League, the, the army you choose is really mostly based on how versatile it is. So if Every base is built in some way, and you have an army that defeats that way. That way, then it's a it's a three star. That was the case with my uh, Kill Squad Skilly Hog army way back in September of last year, I think. That every base was designed with the town hall on the outside, king by the town hall, and then you could just exploit that by using a wall wrecker and the heroes there. Take on the town hall and the uh, the king, and then there's no defense left for the hogs. Not enough, really. So next up is this really popular ring base. I think I I showcased it in one of my earlier videos, but I didn't expect it to be this popular. It's like it's not a particularly special base, and. It, it just kind of looks like it sucks. I don't know. It's like intuition there. That it just it just looks like it sucks, even though it's not terrible. It's not a terrible base. Which I guess is what other people saw. Wallbreakers lure the CC out a little bit early. Rage on the Queen to deal with this P.E.K.K.A. And I'll hopefully get to this Archer Tower in time to save the healer, but with the King there, not going to happen. Queen's also in the poison spell, so I don't have to waste a free spell or anything on her. So now we're left with four free spells still. Wallbreaker actually wasn't able to lure out the Ice Golem, so that really helped out a little, uh, quite a bit. So it looks like Queen's going to walk over to the right, but I kind of wanted her to get this Inferno Tower. But since that's not going to happen... It's probably fine. Rage spell to get her out of the area to get uh, to save her healers. And King over there to take down the Royal Champion. And Lalo's just going to come in from the right side at 3 o'clock. And it's going to sort of just go around the base. And we have the Yeti Blimp for the Town Hall. So it's a little bit risky with how traps could be placed. But it should be fine. This... With the queen the way she is, outside of the base, not in any, uh, not in any danger, and we also have the royal champion, it should be fine to just risk the blimp not getting the town hall, and eventually something will. That's the plan anyway. Single inferno takes down the, the yeti blimp, so that was a bit of an oversight. Yetis are able to get quite a bit of damage off from the town hall, but I don't think they actually end up taking it down. However, this Royal Champion, with her ability, is going to be able to take out the Town Hall, just just with her ability. So there it goes. And that is a 3-star, with the Yeti Blimp Queen Charge Lalo. It doesn't take in a massive amount of skill with this army, because of how versatile it is, so I think pretty much anyone can try it, at least. On to the next. Yeah. Yeah. 
and it's the exact same base. Two bases in a row. Actually, two bases in a row with a Itsu base, and two bases in a row with this base as well. So, that's kind of interesting. But this one is a lot lower in defense levels. So even if I make a massive mistake, it should be fine. In placing that Coco Loon, I also made sure to remember where on the base the Loon started to get targeted. Which means I was able to place the healers as close to the base as possible. Which is, which is a, a, it's a marginal effect on how effective the healers are. Because they don't have to move as far in order to help the queen out. So maybe she didn't lose as much health here as um, as she would have if the healer was if the healers were placed out on the grass where the uh, the flag or where the um, where the flowers are. Looks like forty five archers out of the CC. That's kind of interesting, but one poison takes care of that. Maybe if there were like fifty five archers or something, that would be effective, but. One poison spell takes care of that pretty easily. King takes down the world champion and gets a little bit of damage off on the queen. And looks like on this base, actually, the queen's going to end up going to the left, as I wanted her to. So after after the um, freeze on the queen, we're going to take off with the Lalo, just spamming it in. Because we know that the Yeti Blimp, since there's no like single Inferno in the middle, the Yeti Blimp's going to make it there, and it's going to be fine. Probably about 18 loons or so, or uh, 15 loons or so, end up going towards the Eagle. And that's plenty enough to finish off the rest of the base, with the help of some free spells and high spells. Yeti Blimp and one free spell is able to take down, or two free spells is able to take down the Town Hall. Kind of swag that last free spell, but that's fine. Uh, Yetis are still able. Yetis and the Warden are able to take down the second or two of these Vertos. and Royal Champion's able to finish off the base. A couple of cleanup troops spread out throughout. Probably should get better about placing the cleanup. Cause that was a little slow. But there we are. So two trooper. Two triples on that base design in a row. And now we're feeling pretty good. I think we have one attack left on the day. Waiting for our king to wake up. There we go. And we're going to get some revenge on this base design. So now that we have a Yeti blimp... We actually have a better plan for the town hall than just just like spray and pray. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the loons get there or something. And we can actually start the Lalo at three o'clock and get like all those big structures down, and then the Yetis can just take care of the town hall on their own. So we're still gonna go with the queen charge at the top. Baby Dragon for Funnel. Test Wall Breaker. And then we're going to drop all the Wall Breakers, which I probably should have saved one Wall Breaker there. So then we could Rage it up and get the second layer of walls. Probably didn't need the Free Spell. Actually, we might have, actually. With the Scatter Shot there as well, it probably would have been enough damage to take down the Queen. So, Dragon's out of the CC. They're not going to do too much damage, especially under Poison. So, Queen's working on that wall, and eventually she's going to get to the enemy Queen. So at this point, we're safe to start the Lalo. Packs of uh, four or five loons on each of those defenses there. King, like, for cleanup <laughs> at the bottom of your screen. And we're starting off with... The, and we have the second group of Lalo at 6 o'clock, along with the Royal Champion. The Royal Champion's eventually going to deal with the enemy Royal Champion, so that's why there's that. Missing the Sweeper with the Free Spell, unfortunately. Uh, 
and missing the scatter shot. So instead of so in order to deal with that, I'm gonna use the warden ability. Yeti blimp on the town hall with a rage spell takes it down really easily. Guaranteed to take that down. As long as your Yetis are in the town hall department. So King and Royal Champion and Queen still alive, so all four heroes. And we just have an air defense left. Queen ability is able to take down this king. And that is some revenge on this base. That feels really good. So after switching up the army a little bit and adding the Yeti Blimp instead of Loons and a Stone Slammer, you're able to get five triples out of the final six attacks. So that makes us five from eight on the day. So in a moment, we'll see where that puts us on the leaderboard right after the end of this attack. So this is the second day. Uh, it's like 30 minutes into the second day, something like that. So the rankings aren't going to be quite accurate. We're going to be a little bit lower than we should be, but it's only going to be a couple of places, so it's fine. 112 in the US, we should probably be around 100, top 100-ish. Uh, had we looked at the rankings at the very end of the day. And 1,200 in the global, should probably be around 1,100. So, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I've been Raze Gaming, and I'm out.